So I've had the Samsung Galaxy S23 now for about a month. So this is my about a month review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Roy here. So like I just said, this is all about the regular S23 here, which is the little brother to the Ultra and the Plus. So I'm gonna go over all of the good and the bad about this phone and let you come up with that decision if this is something that should be purchased by you if you are in the market for a new phone. So first let's talk about price because price I feel like is one of the most important pieces of a phone review because if it's overpriced, you're gonna overlook it. And this phone comes in at $799. And I think that is a fair value and affordable price for a flagship device. There is a ton of stiff competition out there in the mid-market range. Some phones are cheaper some phones are going to be more expensive the s23 kind of sits in that weird like middle but not middle because it's obviously a galaxy s device but at 799 it is at least not increased in price compared to the s22 so at least we're getting a better phone at the same price now one thing i would have liked to have seen is the price drop to 699 because just a couple of weeks after the phone was released oneplus came out with the oneplus 11 and to most of our surprise, it's actually a good phone and a lot of people comparing these two. So it would have been nice to see Samsung level the playing field, but at $799, I feel like it's a good value. And at that $799 price, you're getting eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. You can bump it up to 512 gigs if you are looking for something with a little bit more because there is no expandable storage. And the other thing to think about guys is that there is a ton of good deals still with trade-ins if you have an old phone, if you're looking for a new carrier, then of course there's always these new deals where you can get it for free. So like I said, $799 is a fair price, so that's all I got to say about that. Next, let's talk about the battery life, because to be honest with you, I was a little worried when I saw all the specs that came out because they only bumped it to 3,900 milliamps versus the 3,700 milliamps that we got with the S22. Now, when I did get the phone, I was kind of skeptical, like I said, but after my first full day of usage, I was actually pretty dang surprised of how good the battery life is compared to the S22. Like when I used the S22, I got this anxiety about taking my phone and going like to the lake or doing something with my family and not having a charger close by. And with the S23, it is nowhere near that anxiety anymore. So just to tell you, like the first day of full usage, I got almost eight hours of screen on time. That's insane for a phone that has 3,900 milliamps. And I took a screenshot, put it on my community tab, on my YouTube channel, and literally I was like trying to kill it at like 1.30 in the morning. So very happy with the battery. And a lot of it has to do with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 made for Galaxy chip. Now this is a brand new powerhouse of a chip that has definitely done well so far in my testing. The phone feels very snappy and it's a very efficient chip as well. So it doesn't get hot. So that was one of my biggest complaints with the S22 was that the phone got very hot. And if I was like doing any kind of like games or watching 4K videos on YouTube, it really started to warm up. And with this, it really hasn't gotten warm to the touch. Actually, the only time that it's actually gotten hot was when I was first setting it up and going through all those processes of downloading like 110 apps and updates and all that. It got a little warm, but that was the last time that I've actually felt it get hot. So the battery life is awesome guys i really really am impressed with the battery now with the ying and the yang of the battery i got to talk a little bit about the bad which the battery is not the bad part it's the charging is the bad part because unfortunately we are maxing out at 25 watts for fast charging and in today's age of 2023 25 watts is not gonna cut it um, you do get a power cable in the box but unfortunately we don't get a charging brick so that's an added expense uh, but like i said comparing it to the oneplus 11 that came with like an 80 watt charging power brick so you kind of have to kind of say like come on guys like at least throw something in the box and stay away uh, from the apples kind of like no more bricks in the box type of stuff but regardless most people have a usb-c charging brick and like I said, it does max out at 25 watts. If you got the Ultra, it maxes out at 45 watts. And even then, that's still not great. But it is what it is. Uh, it charges in about, I would say, in my testing, 
from zero to 50%, about 45 minutes in my testing so far. So that's just kind of one of the cons. It's not a big con, it's just something to bring up. So next let's talk about the hardware and the build quality of the actual phone. So I really, really like the build quality. It's a 6.1 inch AMOLED display. So it's a beautiful screen. The colors are vibrant. The blacks are very black and deep. Uh, there is absolutely no complaints from me in that screen department. The back is matte finish. I always go with the Phantom Black because I can always jazz it up by putting a skin on it. But with that being said, the back is totally different, right? We got three individual lenses now that very much mimic the Ultra. Instead of having the camera hump or housing around the lenses, I prefer the minimalist look. I think it looks great. Uh, the front is also covered in Gorilla Glass Victus 2, uh, just as the back is. So you're getting the latest and greatest with that. I still recommend putting on a case because ultimately, guys, it's slippery. And even with that matte finish, it can slip out of your hands. And that's an $800 mistake if you smash it up. I wish I was more bold to be able to try and go a day or two without a case, but is what it is. Uh, but I really enjoy the fun sized version of the S23 lineup. It just feels so good in the hand. It's so much easier to use with one handed operations. You do get an in display fingerprint scanner that is the ultrasonic. Uh, kind of talking about the good and bad. I really do love the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. It's more secure, it's snappy, but you lose that snappiness a lot depending on what type of tempered glass screen protector you put on it. Film screen protectors are much better, but they don't protect as well. So just something to think about. So when you're looking on Amazon, looking for a tempered glass screen protector, make sure it does say that it is compatible. A lot of them might still say it's compatible and they're not, but just something to think about because it will affect kind of your everyday use. I can tell you right now from experience, I keep on having to push it and push it and push it. And a tip, lick your finger and it works every single time. Don't know why, it just does. And on the front, we do have a hole punch camera as well, which I'll talk more about in a minute when we get to cameras. It's a flat screen, very bright, all around, just the hardware and the fill of the phone is premium. Absolutely love it. And like I just said, let's go ahead and jump into the cameras. So the cameras are pretty much the same as the S22 with the downgrade a little bit with the telephoto lens. But on the front, we're getting a 12 megapixel camera. And on the rear, we're getting a 50 megapixel camera for the wide angle. We're also getting a 12 megapixel ultra wide and then a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. And I'd probably say out of all the three lenses on the back, the telephoto lens is kind of the low man on the totem pole. Uh, that 50 megapixel wide angle lens is great. It does pixel bend down to 12 megapixels. So you're still getting a lot of detail with your photo, but it's just going in a smaller file size that's much more manageable on your phone or data transfers and things like that. The 12 megapixel ultra wide is fantastic. I really like it. It's a great field of view. And then with the telephoto, it's kind of the low man on the totem pole. Uh, it is good, but once you start to really zoom in, you start to lose a lot of detail. You can do three times optical zoom, but when you go into the space zoom and do 30 times, it's really not usable in my opinion. And then for both the front and the back, we are able to record at 4K up to 60 frames per second, which is really impressive, especially for the front uh, selfie camera, because a lot of these cameras lately have been maxing out at 1080. So to be able to record at 4K 60 on the front is pretty awesome. And on the rear, you can record up to 8K as well at 24 or 30 frames per second. So me personally, I don't really use 8K. Uh, honestly, I don't think I ever have uh, 4Ks for me for right now. Now, maybe five years from now, we'll be talking differently and saying 8K is the, the jam. But the point is, is that 4K is where it's at for me. And you got a lot of tools with the camera. So you got like pro modes for the camera and the video. So you can control a lot of different things like the ISO and the white balance and the shutter speeds. Uh, you can do slow motion and super slow motion. So there's so many fun things about the camera. Now, the only downside in my opinion when it comes to the camera is the shutter speed lag. So when I push the button, 
Sometimes it does it quickly, sometimes it doesn't. And that's something that's plagued Samsung cameras, in my opinion, for many years. Like for my iPhone or for my Pixels, when I push that button, it instantly takes a photo. So the point is, is at some point, I hope Samsung fixes this problem, but it's been something for years that's been an issue. And the video capabilities, one more thing I wanted to point out before we're finishing with cameras, is the stabilization with the camera is much more improved than my S22. So being able to go out and if I'm chasing my kids and recording them in 4K or 1080, I feel pretty good that I'm getting a pretty clean, steady shot. It's not all wonky, not all crazy, but it's just something to point out because like I said, it's very gimbal-like, but not gimbal-like, if that makes sense. Really like the cameras. People love Samsung cameras. They, they take great photos, guys. So plain and simple, great camera system. So all in all, guys, I really feel like the S23 is probably the best bang for your buck when it comes to a small, compact phone. It's a flagship device, right? You got the newest chip for Android. You got this beautiful screen that goes up to 120 hertz. It does actually have an LTPO display, but it's not really going all the way down to one hertz like the big boys. Uh, it actually drops down to like 40-ish hertz, so that also helps with battery life. Feels fantastic in the hand. Uh, takes great photos. All in all, guys, I think it's a win when it comes to it. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Uh, are you going to go for the S23 or are you just going to stay away and maybe wait for like another iPhone or another Android device? What stands out to you uh, when it comes to purchasing a phone? I am very curious to know down in the comments. So hit the like button if you like this video. If you loved it, please subscribe. Ring that notification bell for up-to-date content. So be safe. God bless. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.